Hey guys, I'm about to go and do something super exciting. I'm about to go and experience the costume exhibit for Professor Marston and the Wonder Women in a conversation with writer-director Angela Robinson and costume designer Donna Maloney. Now, if you didn't get to catch Professor Marston and the Wonder Women in theaters, that's okay because it's going to come out on Blu-ray, DVD, and VOD on January 30th. So if you missed it in theater, here is your chance to check it out. And here is my little quick review of the movie and why you should totally see this movie. Professor Marston and the Wonder Women is written and directed by Angela Robinson and it stars Rebecca Hall, Bella Heathcote, and Luke Evans. This story explores the origin of Wonder Woman and how Dr. William Moulton Marston, a Harvard psychologist who was inspired by Elizabeth, his wife, and Olive, his lover, to create the iconic female superhero. While this movie does explore the polyamorous relationship, it never felt raunchy or uncomfortable. It's a tale of uninhibited love and how that was a key to the creation of Wonder Woman. I found this movie so interesting, thought-provoking, and uninhibited. Since Dr. Marston created the modern light detector test, there's a scene with the light detector which is one of my favorite scenes because it opens the characters up to confront their true feelings in that instance. It's raw and fascinating to watch. The chemistry between the three actors really made this movie. It made each scene believable and as the audience I felt all of their joy, struggles, and pain. Angela Robinson is a great storyteller, taking this crazy origin story and letting it play out flawlessly on film. I absolutely love the story. I had no idea that was actually the origin of Wonder Woman, which is one of my favorite superheroes and one of the most iconic female superheroes. So I'm super excited and very honored to be invited tonight. I can't wait to see what they have in store for us. This movie took a while to come to fruition. Um, something like, what, like seven, eight years? Yep. Eight years. <laughs> what were you doing all that time? <laughs> <laughs> Other jobs. Um, yeah, no, it took... Uh, there's been kind of a renaissance of information about the Marstons in the last four or five years. There's the Jill Lepore book and a bunch That's of other stuff. Uh, but it was really like deep pockets of comic bookdom kind of knew the story of the Marstons. It took a bunch of detective work, I guess. I started kind of like trying to uncover the story when there wasn't. And then each year there'd be more and more information. But people think that the hard part was the Marstons, but the hard part was the psychology and Radcliffe and the science and figuring out what it was like to live at that time and kind of all the like stuff you take for granted. Well, I mean, speaking of Wonder Woman, obviously she's this iconic female character. But what I love about this movie is that it focuses on these two women that were in Marston's life. Um, and really tells the story kind of from their point of view. Like, it's, it's, it's very centered on, on that aspect of the relationship. I knew the story. I knew this guy created Wonder Woman and the lie detector and um, lived in this... Uh, I actually set out thinking it was a story about a guy who had a wife and a mistress and then got into bondage and created Wonder Woman. Um, and then I... So I set out starting to write a biopic, and then I came across this crazy detail, which was that Marston died in 1947, but Olive and Elizabeth stayed together for 38 years after that, and, you know, until they both died, and Elizabeth lived to be 100 years old. Um, and I was like, wait, what? Like, why would a wife and mistress, I mean, I don't care who you are, like, stay together, you know, after the dude dies? It's a love story between all three of them. That was um, that was kind of my centerpiece focus that I went in and I was like, okay, so. Um, but then once I knew that piece of it, I was like, okay, I know where Marston's coming from, and I can get where um, all of is coming from. But I don't, but like, where the heck is his wife coming from? Do you know, what I mean? like Elizabeth was my way in. If I didn't have those three actors, I don't know how we could have done it. And there were also, there was a lot of, um, in the 20s, men really would only have two suits. And they would just have different shirts and ties. And he, Luke, was so on board with that. 
So he had a brown suit, and he had a green <laughs> suit, and, you know, and I would just sort of mix it up. And then one day he'd wear the green suit, and he'd wear a blue shirt, and, you know, and it was just, and he was, like, completely on board with it. And he, there was no vanity, and um, that was incredibly helpful. It's like there was something domestic, in a way, about Olive, where um, Elizabeth was a working woman. She really wore those bracelets. I mean, they weren't those bracelets, but you know, they were they were very wide, and she wore them every day of her life. Bella really hated them. Oh no! <laughs> she hates them. She hates them she, she yeah. yeah. because they were heavy, and um, she has very thin, tiny wrists, and so they moved around a lot. And sometimes they would be this way, and sometimes they would be this way, and it was always you know a pain in the ass. So we lined them. Um, like if you actually took one of the bracelets and see, we line them with um, like the kind of things that you would put in the inside of a shoe to make your foot not rub. Yeah. I walked the streets of New York and I went to every single um, store that would sell like trim. Like, and I. I mean, literally, I found those. They were there were two of them, like in the bottom of a bin, you know. Like, and, and I was like, <laughs> okay, I them off at the last minute. I was like, okay, yeah. and so I brought them. And then at the very again, it was we finished it at the very last minute. And I was like, well, maybe, yeah, why not? And so we put it on and we glued them on, and there we go. Like, like originally, it was which should be like red, white, and blue, but right. I thought that was too on the nose. And then we came up with this idea of this dark gray. And that with the cinematographer, that there were stage lights in the burlesque club, and then we'd have a red and a blue light. There's also a backdrop. And a backdrop, you know, like that kind of evoked um, comic book crime. So that when she stepped in, you mean so it was it was evocative of Wonder Woman. You totally get it when you see it, but each separate thing wasn't exactly. It was this kind of tinny tiara that was staged or like right. it's right because initially I had gotten like you know a traditional tiara. Angela said, you know, I'm rethinking that tiara, and I think it should be something a little like a little red stone. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. And uh, literally, I found that on Etsy, yeah. and it came from Canada. Was the release plan always to have it sort of in the neighborhood of the DC Wonder Woman, or did that just sort of happen? Um, both, kind of. Um, we knew, it's funny, because when we were shooting it in October, we knew Wonder Woman was coming out, but everybody, like, everybody's kind of like 2020 hindsight now, like, it's a worldwide phenomenon, but when I was shooting, there was a lot of naysayers. Like, nobody was like, not nobody, but the conventional wisdom was not that it was going to be a global phenomenon. The conventional wisdom was like, oh, I don't know, you know, I don't it's know, it's a thing, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, like, so it actually makes me feel really good. <laughs> Go Patty. Um, and gal. So that, so we knew it was coming, but it was kind of, it's an accident of history in a way, or a convergence of zeitgeist that it happened in the same year, because people sometimes give me credit for my masterful planning of having that happen, but I think that's hilarious because I've been trying to get this movie made for so long. Um, but I do think, but we did know it was coming out, and then it ended up, yeah. And it was also um, Wonder Woman's 75th anniversary year, too. As yes, no, I mean, there was many things that you know, awesome. came together. Yeah. I wanted to know, so you said you had 25 days to make this movie, which is very not very long. Did you feel like any scenes had to be rushed or certain parts in the script that was written had to be taken out and was kind of sacrificed due to that? I, I did a, basically when we got greenlit by Sony Stage 6, um, I had to basically do a radical, like the, the script, that I originally sent them was for twice the budget, and to like was more probably. And I had to basically they were like, you can make your money if you do it for half what this film. So I went back 
and I had a kind of crisis of faith, but then this um, direct deed instructor of mine once said, like, Oedipus is 90 pages, do you think you're better than Oedipus? And I was like, I'm not better than Oedipus. So I'm like, <laughs> I um, went down and I was like, okay, I'm just going to make it about their um, relationship and that when you fall in love, like you almost don't see outside of the people who you are with. So I was just like, okay, I'm just going to lean into that idea of that they are just experiencing themselves and they almost don't, aren't aware of the rest of the world. So the experience of the movie will kind of, and also conveniently, I won't show it. Um, <laughs> but there are some points where I feel like, you know, I mean, every filmmaker, you were like, oh, I would have loved to kind of in that, I mean, but we are just, you know, like, sailing, like, idea that it was 25 days to do all of that is insane. Like the poor, I mean, I have to give it up. I mean, for so many reasons, but for the actors where like, <laughs> like once Melanie looked at me and she was just like, God, it's just the craziest day. She was like, I was in 1929 and then I was in 1945 and then I was like <laughs> deeply in love and then I was crying my eyes out and look at it all in a day where they just go like, wow. boom, 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 like from. And hair changes. And hair changes. Um, and so that was, so yes, there's definitely parts where I'd be like, oh, I wish we had more time, but um, all in all, basically a movie is a miracle and whatever, like a lot of times that's a good thing. Do you know what I mean? Like I actually feel like this film ultimately is a better, more pure version of what I would have made if I'd had twice the budget and all the money. So it just kind of ends up being what it is. So we're about to pick a corset out for me, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch her name. My name's Lucy. Lucy is about to help me figure out which type of these corsets, and she's actually explaining to me because I have no idea what I'm looking at. So we're looking at these, and these are called the underbust. Yes, so this is an underbust, and this is called a zeta. Um, the reason it's called a zeta is because it's slightly shorter for a shorter torso and less wide hips. Okay. This is our more t shirt. The difference, as you can see, is that it pops out a little bit more here and accentuates the hip line. Ah, okay. Still an underbust Got it. This one over here is our Luna and our most popular because it fits all kinds of torso. Oh. So if you happen to be on the shorter side, this one would be something I would recommend. That's me. <laughs> yeah. So this one is probably what I would fit you for just because we'd be able to get your torso in there. It accentuates everything. It slims it right down. That would probably be what we would do. And perfect. And then what about, she, she was trying to explain to me about these ones down so here So these are well. called corselets. And corselets are essentially a shapewear product. They are as true to vintage as it could possibly get. Oh. The idea is that they basically accentuate your natural curves. Oh. So it's really more about just kind of casing everything nicely and presenting it in a way that looks just glamorous and old time vintage, 1920s, film noir kind of thing. I love it. Yes, the corselets are really popular, but for the uh, ladies of less stature, we tend to go for the Mary Widow. Uh, the Mary Widow is this one. A personal favorite of mine. Oh, so pretty. Yes, this is essentially a long line uh, bra that turns into a girdle and it's boned along here in the same way that the corset is boned, but it gives uh, less structure and more just kind of seats you in right here, gives you the ability to wear uh, stockings with it. So it's kind of an all in one, and these straps do detach, which is oh. the that we have that do come off. So I love it. If you have a strap this dress, this is, this is oh, what I'm Oh, perfect. Yes. I kind of feel like this one's calling my name. A lot of people have been feeling that way. Too. Yeah, and it's it just it's so beautiful and intricate and very feminine. Yeah, absolutely. Which I love. And I, I happen to own this piece and I also have its sister, which is down here. You can't really see it right now, but that's our glamour girdle and that's without the bra. And I wear that under pretty much everything that's tight. It's a really great foundation garment. So this is what I would recommend to anybody that's not interested in getting that kind of uh, sort of waist that you could only get with a Like the Dita Von Tees waist? Yeah, I mean, you know, there are definitely occasions for that, but in my opinion, if you're going for a vintage look, you really want to copy that look perfectly, and you want to be as true to that style and era as possible, and this is what was worn back then, so ah. I always recommend this. It's beautiful. <laughs> so, are we going for this one? We are going for this one. Sounds like a plan. Uh, 
guys, look at this beautiful corset I am about to try on. This is called the Mary Widow. And it's just so, look at the stitching. It's so pretty. It's so delicate. It's so feminine. I can't wait to try it on. I'm about to change into my own little personal corset. This part, you guys will not get to see. All done with my fitting and it fit like a glove and it was fantastic. I've never had something so pretty and like very intimate on like that before. And I also got to pick out a pair of stockings, which is really cool. Well you guys, that's the end of the night for me. It was a fantastic experience. It was so nice to sit down for a very intimate conversation with the director Angela Robinson and costume director Donna Maloney, I believe that was her last name, and just to hear what it was like, the movie process, what it was like working with the cast, and the fact that they had 25 days to shoot this movie is completely mind-blowing because if you watched it, it's such a well-told story. Um, it, it's nearly perfect and you really couldn't tell that they only had 25 days. And this event was really, really nice. I feel like it really did its job celebrating the movie. Don't forget Professor Marston and The Wonder Woman comes out on DVD, Blu-ray, and VOD on January 30th. I want to thank Professor Marston and The Wonder Woman, Sony Home Entertainment, and thank Jane for inviting me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Uh, I went to close out the video and I forgot to show you what came in this cute little swag bag. So the event was held at what Katie did, which is a, um, a vintage uh, lingerie store, hence the corsets and all in theme with Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman. So you guys have already seen the corset, which is here, so I don't need to show you that, but they also gave us, whoa, I got my own lasso of truth. So cool and velvety soft. And then we got, Hang on, there's a couple of things in here. Uh, a catalog for what Katie did, which is again the venue that was uh, that we were at uh, for tonight's event. Best of all, well, I don't know if it's best of all because the course that's pretty cool too, but I would say this is the main event, Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman on um, Blu-ray. I am actually really excited to, one, revisit the movie, but the best thing about Blu-ray is obviously the behind the scenes and all the extra the bonus uh, features. So I am really excited to, to look through this and see what they have. On the exclusive, they have the secret identity of Charles Moulton motion comic, deleted scenes, and they have special features, the dynamic trio, birth of a feminist icon, a crucial point of view directing Professor Marston and Wonder Woman, which is basically like conversation with director Angela Robinson and hopefully with the cast and crew as well. So I am so excited that I got to take one of these home. This is honestly, guys, such a great movie. Please do yourself a favor and check this out. Go grab it on DVD. Blu-ray, you will thank me. I promise you. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you in the next video.